Hi guys! Welcome to another video with me, Amy Zara, and A to Z Yoga. Today's video is in honour of somebody who asked me to do a video on Halasana, Plow Pose. So if you don't know what Halasana or Plow Pose is, you will learn today. But it's the one where you kind of balance on your shoulders and your neck and your head and you bring your legs up over your head to touch the floor. Now actually in A to Z Yoga we don't really practice this pose in its entirety anymore. I used to. Um, but one of the reasons why I don't really teach it anymore is because I don't believe in the need to put so much pressure on the neck. So I teach it in a slightly different way that still gives you the amazing lengthening that a halasana or plow pose gives you in the thoracic spine, the upper spine and the neck, but without putting the pressure on the C7 specifically, which is that um, bone at the base of your neck that sticks out of it. It's just a bit too much pressure and it's not really very functional because there's not really any time in our daily lives that we ever need to put pressure on our neck <laughs> or on our C7. Um, I am, however, for those of you who really, you know, want to learn the more standard way of doing a pose, going to teach you a safer way of doing it that I myself will still even do now that doesn't put pressure on the neck but it still gives you that look of the full pose. Okay, so I'm going to teach you it in two ways. So you're going to need, if you are going to go for the full pose, you're going to need four blocks, not bricks, not those big chunky ones. You're going to need four flat blocks um, and ideally a towel or another mat, uh, which I will show you what we do with them later. OK, so let's begin. Start off lying on our back, knees bent, and we're going to start by just trying to get a little bit of movement through the shoulders, a little bit of movement and freedom in the neck. So I want you to take your arms into a goal post or uh, what I like to call a cactus kind of position. <laughs> so your elbows are bent at shoulder height. And then close your eyes for a moment. From this position, take a nice deep breath into your belly. And try to really let your breath move all the way through the upper body. So it's moving from your lower belly all the way up into your chest. And it's expanding every area that the breath touches. And then you try to deepen that breath, breathing a bit more into the back of the nose and the back of the throat. And then send it right up into the top of your back, into that thoracic spine. So it's the part of the spine between the shoulder blades that meets the neck. And then we're going to start to move the head. So you're going to try and keep your chin on this level. Try not to let it tuck in or lift up so high. You take a breath in, right up into that space between the shoulder blades. And then as you exhale, turn your head to the right. Like it's just turning on a little pivot instead of just um, bending to the right. And then inhale as you come back to the center, breathing again into the upper spine. Exhale and then turn it to the left. Again, inhaling into the upper back. Exhaling to the right. Inhaling to the upper back. Exhaling to the right, left, sorry. Inhaling back to the center. Then I want you to place your hands at the base of your skull, linking your fingers, and then place your thumbs right at the 
back of the head. So it's at the top of the neck that just meets the back of the skull, the very bottom of the skull. And you're just gonna gently press the thumbs there. So you're starting to release some of the stuff that can get a little bit stuck around the neck and a little bit stuck around the back of the head. Often this can give you uh, headaches and shoulder pain. So as you press gently through that point, you take a breath in to the top of the back again. As you exhale, use your hands and use your fingers to lift your head and then bring the head back into your hands. So I don't actually want you to use your neck muscles right now. I want you to use your hands to lift the head, unstick all those muscles and everything around the neck, and then let the head drop back into the hands to come back down. Do that a couple more times. Good. And then keep your hands here, but you can move the thumbs a little bit further down the neck now, so you feel them each side of the neck. Take a breath in, all the way into the upper back and the lower belly. And as you exhale, draw the lower belly in, draw the ribs in, and lift both legs up. Have the knees just in line with your hips. Let the feet kind of drop down, but then flex them. And then take a breath in, again, into the belly and into the top of the back. And then as you exhale, draw the belly in, draw the ribs in, and from your ribs and your belly curl up. Try and get your shoulder blades off the floor, and with your thumbs around the sides of the neck, you're trying not to let the neck engage. You're doing this from the belly, you're doing this from the ribs. So to be able to do a proper halasana as you inhale, come down, you need to have core strength. You need to have a ability to use your core. So we're firing it up now. Again, breathe in, as you exhale, curl up. As you inhale, come down. And again. One more time, and this time hold it up there. Now from here, I want you to draw the lower belly in more, and then bring the pubic bone and the tailbone together to just gently peel the tailbone up off the floor. And then inhale, come down. So that's starting to really work the lower belly, which again is a really integral part of doing a plow pose. Take a breath in. Exhale, curl up with your upper body. And then pull the pubic bone and tailbone together, peel them up off the floor. Inhale, come down. And again, exhale, curl up with the upper body and then draw the pubic bone and tailbone together, peel it up off the floor. Inhale, come down. We'll do that one more time like that. Peel that pelvis off. Inhale, come down. Now keep your arms here. Extend your legs up, and then you're gonna to try to take them into a bit of a straddle. So I either would move to the side or if you can't get your legs into kind of a wide straddle, you're gonna just bend your knees. So you're in more of a, an almost happy baby position. And you're just allowing those knees to drop slightly out to the side. Then you're gonna take your hands to the back of your head again. Take a breath in. Exhale, curl up through the upper body. And then do the same thing in the lower body. Peel that tailbone up off the floor. Inhale, take it down. Again. Exhale, curl up, peel the tailbone off the floor, inhale, come down, two more times, exhale, curl up, tailbone comes off, inhale, come down, last time. Inhale, come down, beautiful, bring the legs together. Feet come back down, and then your arms can relax down. Then bring the knees up, grab a hold of your knees, rock yourself up to sitting, and then pop onto all fours. So you're gonna have your knees underneath your shoulders, your wrists underneath your, uh, sorry, your, knee, your wrists underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips in this tabletop position. And then try to pull the hands and the knees towards each other. So you start to feel the belly kick in and move up slightly.
Then we're just gonna release the shoulders a bit more. So I want you to breathe in, pulling the chest forwards, squeezing the shoulder blades together and softening that space between them. And then exhale, push into your hands and expand that space. Again, squeeze the shoulder blades together. Inhale, let the chest come forwards. It's kind of like a cow pose, but I don't want this to happen where you collapse the middle of your back. You actually don't move the pelvis at all. It's really just the upper back that's moving. As you exhale, you expand. Again, inhale, pull the chest forward. Squeeze those shoulder blades slightly together. As you ex exhale, expand. We're gonna do that one more time. Exhale, pulling the shoulder blades together. In, and then expand. And then let them come somewhere between the two. Your head is in line with your spine with the neck nice and relaxed. Don't let it kind of do funny things. Keep the neck relaxed. Then keeping the shoulders nice and stable, extend the right leg out, extend the left leg out. And we're going to hold it here for a second. And then you're going to try and bring the right knee in and tap the right elbow to round the back. Then come back. Bring the left knee in, tap the left elbow and round the back. And then again, right knee in, round the back and tap the elbow. Left knee in, round the back and tap the elbow. If that's too much and it's, you, just pass, you just can't do it at all, you do it from this kind of baby plank position and it's the same thing. You bring that right knee in, round the back, tap the elbow. Bring the left knee in, tap the elbow, round the back. One more time on each side. Good, then tap the toes, push yourself up and back into a downward dog and just walk the feet in a little bit. I want you to keep the heels lifted, press into your big toe mound so you feel that lift through the inner arches and draw the belly in. Try to make your legs take the pressure away from your wrists by really engaging your glutes, engaging your sitting bones and pressing those legs up. Then you're gonna press through the left foot Gently raise the right leg without moving the pelvis. And then bring that foot forwards and step it just between the hands without moving the hand. Then turn the back foot out and line up your front heel with the middle arch of your back foot. And then inhale and you can windmill yourself up into a down, uh, warrior two position. Now just relax your arms a second. Find that position. Your back foot is pushing down, your front foot is pushing down, you bend your front knee. Then from here you're going to take your arms up to shoulder height and turn the palms up. As the palms turn up it should make you feel the shoulder blades move down slightly. Then bend your elbows a little. Breathe in right into the top of your back. As you exhale, lift the shoulder blades turning the palms down and round your upper back a little. Inhale, take the shoulder blades back into the back, squeeze them together slightly. Exhale, lift the shoulder blades, turn the palms down, round the upper back. Inhale, shoulder blades come together, chest expands without this happening in the ribs. Exhale, round the back, round the shoulders one more time. Exhale, round the back. Then come back, place your hands either side of the front foot, step it back to plank. Bend the knees, push back to downward dog. Walk the feet in a little bit. Keep that little bit of a lift through the arches of your feet. Your belly is drawing in and you're keeping the weight even between your hands and your feet. Then press into the right foot. Gently float the left leg up without moving your pelvis. And then inhale as you exhale, bring the knee forward. Step that foot between the hands. Turn the back foot out and line your front foot heel up with the inner arch of the back foot. Windmill yourself back up to a warrior two position. Press into the outer edge of that back foot. Bend your front knee, but keep this hip, the front hip, moving away from that front thigh. Then turn the palms up, bend the elbows slightly. Take a big breath into your upper back. As you exhale, lift the shoulder blades around the upper back. Inhale, take it back. Exhale, lift the shoulder blades round the upper back. Inhale, take it back. Two more. Last one. 
and then hands come either side of the front foot and again step it back to plank bend your knees come back to downward dog now that we have released a little bit through the shoulders we've released a little bit through the neck we're just going to do a little dolphin pose and then we're going to try and do that halasana the slightly simpler one the one that doesn't put so much pressure on the neck so from this down dog position just gently bend your knees let your knees come down and then bring your elbows in underneath your shoulders press down through your forearms with those toes tucked under really push the forearms down spread the shoulder blades on the back let your head relax let your neck relax and then lift the legs lift the hips keep pressing into your forearms and really try to spread those shoulder blades on the back feel like you're lifting the front ribs into your back body and you're expanding your back body as you breathe then to open up that back body a little bit more we're going to push into the left foot gently raise the right leg you don't have to do this but you, you can if you want to bend the knee and then open up that hip a little inhale take it down Keep pressing through your forearms, press through the right foot, float the left leg up, bend the left knee, and then open up through that left hip. Inhale, take the foot down, and then slowly come back down to the knees. So we're now turning so that our head faces the wall and our hands come onto the wall. I've turned my camera so that you can see, so I'm sorry that you get a full view of the mirror, but you know. <laughs> filming issues so now keep pressing into the palms of your hands so that you feel like you're really trying to push the wall away from you by doing this you're connecting a little bit more into the back muscles and then you should feel that you can feel the shoulder blades spread a little bit more on the back and the space between them sink into the floor a bit more so now as you press into your palms you press into the wall take a breath into the belly and into the upper back just when, like when we did the core work and as you exhale, draw the lower belly in, lift the legs up. Again, you're keeping those legs relaxed, but you're going to flex your feet so the feet are active. You're going to think about the work that we did when we did the core work. You're going to take a big breath in. As you exhale, extend the legs, draw the lower belly in, and then bring the tailbone and the pubic bone up off the floor. So then the feet are going to come to the wall. You're going to walk the feet towards your hands, towards your head and then push even more into your feet and into your hands and that's going to give you this big stretch through the back it's a beautiful stretch it's like someone's pulling your pelvis away you keep drawing the belly in and breathing into the back if you can't get yourself up there don't worry work on doing that little lift now to come down, you draw the belly in, you keep the legs close to the body, and you come down one vertebra at a time, nice and slow. And then bend the knees and bring the feet down. So that's my kind of more used A to Z version of uh, a halasana. Now I'm going to show you how you can do it with the blocks. Okay, so this is a little bit of a, here's what I made earlier. Blue Peter moment. So if you have a mat or a, a nice long towel, what you do is put four blocks inside those mats and inside those towels. You just very simply bring them into the middle. I'm going to show you quickly how it's done. You bring them kind of into the middle of the mat, so they'll look like this, four blocks together. You fold one side over and then you can kind of move the blocks, move the mat, wiggle and jiggle them so that you have it really nice and uh, firmly put in there. And then you keep a hold of that, you grab the other side and then you fold it all the way over so that again, it's nice and tight. I didn't actually do that so beautifully. Let's just make that a little bit better. Sometimes it takes a little bit of practice and doing it a couple of times, a couple of attempts are fine. That again, flip it over and then pull it over. That's it, perfect. So you want it to be pretty tight inside the mat. Now, 
what we do with these is our halasana. So you're going to turn it. Again, you can use the wall. So you're going to have the mat about here. To get the right distance, you're going to come and sit on it. You, what you want is with straight legs, which I don't have obviously from here, so I'm going to push mine slightly further back. With straight legs, you want to be sitting kind of in the center of the blocks, right? Don't force the straight legs, but that's the distance that you want to have. And then you're going to flip yourself around and you're going to come off of them. So you're sitting on the floor and come and bring your shoulders onto them. Your head should be free. So you need to have a little bit of space between the back of these blocks and your shoulders, about a thumb's length. So you see where this little ridge is between the thumb and the first finger? You want that to be kind of on the corner, on the, on the little edge of the blocks, right? Then from there, you're going to bring your hands down. You can place your fingertips on the floor. This is another reason why I don't love doing it this way, because actually when you teach halasana and you don't have the arms up here, you have them down here. You don't really want to have this lift in the wrist because then it stops you working your triceps. So it just means that from here you're going to work a little bit harder. A nice way that I like to teach it actually is trying to bend through the elbows first, pushing down into the triceps. So you're really feeling that connection to your shoulder blades. Then from there you can bring the hands down and try not to come into this piano position. Just press through the fingertips. Then walk your feet in. Keep your head and your neck nice and long, the back of the neck especially. Lift your pelvis slightly so you start to feel those glutes engage. Lift one leg, breathe in, lift the other leg, then push and swing yourself over. Then you can walk the feet down, press into the back of the arms, and then if you want to, you can use your arms for support. So you can place your hands on the back, fingertips facing your bum, press your toes and your uh, big toe mounds into the wall and just keep that head relaxed. It should feel soft, it shouldn't feel like you're pushing into the neck, you should be able to still talk and breathe. And then you can walk the feet back up the wall again and to come down it's very much like you do in my A to Z version, so you're going to take those hands back down very gently, keep the legs coming towards your belly one vertebra at a time, bring yourself down. Good, you have to do a little bit of manoeuvring because you don't have anything underneath your bum. And then you can even just relax here for a moment because this is quite a nice way to relax the pelvis. Let your arms relax, your head relax, and take a nice deep breath into your nose. And out through your mouth. And you can slide your legs out. Keep your head relaxed, shoulders relaxed. And allow your breath to come back to a nice, soft, gentle flow. And then you can bend both knees, roll onto one side, and then bring yourself up to sitting. And that's it. So I hope that's helped you find a way to go into Halasana. If you don't have those blocks, then you can just keep repeating my A to Z yoga version at the wall. It is, in my opinion, a safer way of doing it and a more functional way. So it's a great way to learn to do it. Have a wonderful, wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Namaste.